Hey y'all, Sister Modukoy here. Sister Modukoy's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show. Woo, we got a great show for you today. We're in California and I'm telling you, it's feeling like I'm at Death Valley. <laughs> it's a hot day today. So we're gonna talk about why it's important to make sure that you're supplementing, right? Why, why am I always talking about supplementing? I talk about food, good food to eat, on and on. But why is that not enough? Well, I'm getting ready to show you. And you heard the drums, right? That means it's time to pull the folk together because this is some great, important information, as always. Okay, so let's take a look at that first link. Now, remember, I didn't write this. I'm just the messenger, okay? Let's take a look. All right. We're, then we're going to look at the title of that one at the top, the very top. Okay. Dirt poor, huh? First of all, let us realize that dirt is priceless, okay? But in this case, this person's asking uh, someone with a blog or something, have fruits and vegetables become less nutritious, right? I'm always, uh, you know, I'm vegan. I've, not everybody's going to be vegan, but I'm always talking about make sure you get them in, get them in. Matter of fact, eat more of that than anything, fresh fruits and vegetables. But this person's asking, are they less nutritious? Huh? Let's, see, let's take a look at what, they're, what this person tells them. Okay. And so they're saying it would be overkill to say that there's no nutrition or little nutrition, but they're comparing it to maybe people eating junk food, right? So let's see what they talk about in terms of whether this food is more or less nutritious than years ago. And they say, wow, but it is true that fruit and vegetables grown decades ago were much richer in vitamins and minerals than the ones we're getting today, than the varieties we're getting today, most of what we're getting today. That's not good news, right? You're not dealing with less stress or less pollution or any of those kinds of things. You need more nutrition, not less. You, don't, you need more nutrition than your grandparents did. You need less calories because you're not working as hard as our great, great grandparents did, right? But we certainly need more nutrition. We're dealing with more air pollution, adulterated water, stress, war, all those kinds of things, right? So if our food is less nutritious, why is that? So he's saying, this person's saying the main culprit in why this nutritional, nutritional trend is going this way, and we always want nutrition to be going up, right, is that the soil is depleted. Oh, you probably heard me say that before. The soil has been depleted of nutrition, right, because the plants take nutrition up from the soil and they deliver it to us. They can make vitamins amino acids, which we make into proteins. They can make EFAs, essential fatty acids, that all of those are essential that we need. But guess what? They can't make new minerals, and we absolutely have to have minerals. You say, what you talking about? I don't hear nobody talking about minerals. If you're anemic, what do they say you need more of? Iron, right? So come on now, we have got to have these nutrients in order to be healthy and live a long, good life. Let's look down a little further talks about a landmark study on this very topic was done. And so what, they're, what we're finding is the researchers are growing varieties of fruits and vegetables. They're growing them so they get bigger. They're growing them so they get faster growing. They're growing them so that they are more pest resistant. But guess what? None of that is about nutrition. So now you go in the store and you see those big pieces of fruit and vegetables. They almost look like plastic, right? Oh, did I say plastic? They kind of taste like plastic too, don't they? They don't have the nutrients, therefore they don't have their robustness. They don't have the smell, the texture's not right. And guess what? There's no nutrition. It's almost like you might as well be eating plastic. So this is a big problem. We need to focus on nutrition because that's why we eat in the first place. Remember, people, yeah, we like taste. I love to eat, so I like flavorful food. But it's the reason we have to put that food in our mouth every day is nutrition. Yes, absolutely. Now, let's look at the next article. Remember, I didn't write this. I'm the messenger. Do you see this? Human security at risk as depletion of soil accelerates scientists warn. This is not the average Joe on the street. This is somebody who has studied this, who's doing research. And so we we got to do something. If you want to be healthy, you don't, you don't want to be dying longer than you're living. And unfortunately, that is some people's lives. They're on medication. They're in the hospital. They're sick all the time. They're weak. They don't sleep well. Um, they can't handle stress. Things like that. And that's all because they don't have the proper nutrients for their bodies to keep them at that 
that even level at what we call zero, right? Something upsets them too easily. They get violent. Uh, the smallest cold or a flu put, comes through, and it wipes people out, you see? And our body is much stronger than that if we give it the right raw materials to work with, to keep us healthy and strong, and that starts with the soil. Any farmer down south will tell you, I gotta have good dirt to grow good food. We have to remember that, right? Okay, so let's go on, and we're gonna move today, we're gonna listen to some of that interview with um, Dirk interviews Dr. Wallach, and it's a perfect, wonderful uh, discussion on nutrition, and because I'm here to say, we're, we're sent here to enjoy life, create, and share, okay? Did you hear sickness, disease, medication, uh, hospitals? You didn't hear me talk about those things because we're going to learn how to avoid those things. We're going to learn how to live the high life all the time because that's what we deserve and that's what we're sent here for. Okay, so let's listen to a bit of this, this uh, interview. Hello, my name is Dirk Twine, and I'm speaking with Dr. Joel Wallach, the mineral doctor. Dr. Wallach is one of the foremost authorities on nutrition and its use in the prevention and reversal of diseases. Dr. Wallach and I will discuss the top 10 leading causes of death among African Americans. But before we begin, I would like Dr. Wallach to give us a brief biographical sketch and his philosophy on health and nutrition. Thank you, Dirk. It's uh, always good to spend some time with Feel good. I want you to do good. And remember, the reason we have to eat periodically during the day is for energy, is to give our body the resources that it needs to repair itself, Think about young children. They have to grow a healthy body, right? And so we have to make sure that we get the things that we need. And as we make this journey, our nutritional needs can change over time. Maybe when you're younger, you're athletic. Maybe when you become 30 or 40, you become athletic. It, age ain't nothing but a number, right? We just have to make sure that we do for our body what it needs done so that it can keep taking care of us. So we have to take care of it so it can take care of us. Okay, let's see if we're ready. ...by eliminating health care costs. And Dirk, we do that in animals with little nutritional formulas, and I'm sure you've seen these little alfalfa pellets for mice and rats and guinea pigs and hamsters and gerbils and rabbits and kibbles and bits for dogs and... There's sheep pellets and pig pellets and horse pellets and duck pellets and trout pellets and monkey pellets and chicken pellets. And the reason why they have the animal feeds in these little pelletized farms is so that every mouthful is biochemically perfect. The animal can't sort through and just eat only the sunflowers or the raisins. Every mouthful is going to be scientifically and perfectly biochemically complete. Did you hear that? Biochemically complete. Perfect. Okay, so... They're doing that for animals that they raise for, you know, whatever they're raising them for on the farm, right? Now, they've done studies and research because that's about money, right? Follow the money. So the research they've done is to make sure that these animals stay healthy so that they can use them for whatever they want to use them for down the line, right? Whether it's milk, whether it's meat, whatever. I'm a vegan, but I understand that the animal has a body, and they understand, the farmers and the agricultural research scientists, they understand that they have to keep health costs down so that they can get these animals to market, right? So this is the kind of thing that Dr. Wallach has used as a model to understand, okay, well, we do all these things for these animals. Why are we understanding what makes an animal sick and we deal with it in a nutritional way? Because we can't send out a vet every time a animal gets a cold or you know animals will get cancer they'll have arthritis all that kind of thing too so how are they able to farm millions and billions of animals every year get them to whatever in purpose they're going to use them healthy but we are not staying healthy listen to what he says about how the research 
has been used to make sure that animals stay healthy for what they want. But why are we not staying healthy? Come on, let's, let's finish this up. Now, we've been so successful over the last 75 years using this concept, Dirk, even though we spent $100 billion, we've eliminated up to 900 different diseases in animals that still plague people. And as a veterinarian, it... Did you hear that? 900 different types of illnesses, diseases. They've resolved it in animals. The cow, the horse, the pig, the, the bull, the whatever, the chicken, the duck, the goose. They figured out what is missing in their nutrition to keep them healthy to whatever endpoint they want to use them for. Not you're gonna tell me that there aren't uh, some similarities. No, we're not an animal, a chicken, a duck, or this, that, or the other thing. But they have hearts, they have muscles, they have livers, they have kidneys, and like I say, they will get sick in ailments just like us. People who have dogs and cats, you know that your dog or cat can get cancer. You know your dog or cat can end up with a heart disease, can end up with uh, allergy on and on. And you, you go and either you find a way to feed them well so that those things don't happen or you end up at the vet with a big bill. Okay, let's continue listening. It always seemed odd to me that we would be able to use this nutritional technology to eliminate these diseases in animals. Nobody was employing them in people. So I went back to school and in 1978 became a physician and began to use these veterinary nutritional formulas in my human patients. And I'm here to tell you that the concept of preventing and curing diseases in animals with nutritional formulas works exactly the same in people. Been doing it since 1978. Have not yet been able to get too many doctors involved. And so starting about 1978, I really began to lecture uh, to the general public and I really appreciate this opportunity to share this information with your listeners. That is absolutely amazing to me, and I, I'm on the quest, I guess, that you are also in terms of trying to get this information out to the general public. As I said, we're going to discuss today the uh, top 10 leading causes of death in the African-American community. And let's get started with number one, okay. heart disease. Heart disease. Well, everybody has one heart, and that's the problem. You know, you have two kidneys, and the liver regenerates very so we heard that he has done all this research and understanding that the animals, now the animals are eating very naturally in a way, but they had realized that they still had to supplement their food to make sure they were getting all the nutrition they needed. So that, again, the animals weren't just eating one type of food, you know, I like the, the alfalfa, but I don't like the, the, this, so that they would be, be healthy, stay healthy, and avoid diseases because that, huh, follow the money, that would really drive the cost of those agricultural food products up, right? So the same thing works for us. We have a physical body that needs nutrients, and we have got to intake those kinds of foods to make sure that we stay healthy. So, Mr. Engineer, are we at the time mark? Yes. Okay. So I am going to play some more of that interview. We're going to continue to discuss and understand what it is about understanding food is no longer enough. I don't care if you're eating all organic. It's not enough unless you grow your own food and you make sure to super um, enrich the soil with minerals. Your food is not going to be enough to keep you healthy. And the example, we see it all around us in America, right? Americans have more food available to them than anyone else on the planet. You can't walk down the street without going past a snack shop, a gas station. They all have, quote unquote, food, right? Grocery stores all over the place. LA has tons of farmer's markets. If there's not one, there's two or three farmer's markets every day in LA. But look at Americans. We're way down on the list of the, quote unquote, developed countries, industrial countries, in terms of health. So food itself is not keeping us healthy. And we have supposedly this phenomenal medical system, right? All these drugs and hospitals with all this equipment and stuff. And we're still way down on the list in terms of health. Okay, so if you're not healthy, how are you going to have an enjoyable, joyful, prosperous life? Health, wealth starts with health. 
So this is why I keep trying to drill it into you. Children don't deserve to come here and be made sick because all we feed them is fried French fries and um, soda pop and cereal that has no nutrition. They can't grow a brain with that. And that's why you see a lot of behavioral problems. A lot of children now have diabetes. They're obese. You'd see children, they're, they're not very tall, but they're probably as wide as they are tall. And that doesn't make sense. That is, that is a suffering. That is not, I call it child abuse, really. You know, and uh, I'm not saying that someone is purposely doing it because this is what we have to, we have to educate ourselves. We have to understand and learn how our body operates and what it needs, right? You take care of your car. You take care of your house. Why? Because you've invested a lot in those things. Your clothes, you take them to the dry cleaners, your shoes, you keep them polished, on and on. Possession, let me tell you this. This body, this is your first house. This is your first house, and you cannot live without it. This one you can't go homeless without. without. You understand? You need this. It's a vehicle, it's a manufacturing plant, and it is your home right your first home you've got to take care of it so that you can feel good and not be in a dis-ease unbalanced state all right all right so let's listen to the next uh track we're going to listen to it on and off and then we're going to continue understanding why food is just not enough now like i say americans should be the most healthy people on the planet we got tons of food but apparently it's not doing the job let's understand why one of the things that I've seen is that the statistics are so much higher in the African-American community. So you're basically telling me that because of the way that African-Americans prepare their food seems to be one of the greatest issues. They're creating a lot of free radicals in their bodies by eating a certain way. When you hear statistics like African-American men are twice as likely to the way we prepare our food creates a lot of free radicals. Free radicals, what is that? All right, so chemically, I'm not going to go into all the biochemistry on that, but imagine putting something in your mouth that's equivalent to putting a machine gun, swallowing a machine gun, and it's in there just firing off, just firing off, right? Chemically, that's what happens with foods that cause free radicals. They're causing damage in the body by breaking it down. Remember, I think it was last week, I talked about foods that either help you to regenerate or they help you to degenerate, right? Okay, it's one or the other. There's a, one food I know of that is neutral, but that doesn't mean it does not aid the body, and that's coconut water. It even sounds good for you, doesn't it, right? But other things you take in will either be destroying the body or building it. Let's listen more to be diagnosed with prostate cancer as white men. Yeah, yeah, it tells you the story, and it's not genetic. Doctors want to tell African Americans that it's genetic. They say, look, this is genetic, and you know, because you're a black man, you're doomed to get this. That's not true. There was a wonderful study that was done and reported in the February 1999 issue of Scientific American, where they went to Nigeria and they studied high blood pressure in people living out in the bush in a very primitive state. And what they found was that people living out in the bush in Nigeria had no experience with blood pressure cuffs. I mean, they had never seen one and didn't even know what hypertension meant. They found that only 7% of the people living in the bush in Nigeria had high blood pressure. They came back to the United States and did a lot of DNA testing and found a large group of people whose ancestors had originated in Nigeria. And they uh, had a rate of high blood pressure was 33%. And they could say immediately that it wasn't genetic because it was genetic to be 7% and 7%. Well, what was the difference between the Nigerians living out in the bush in Nigeria and the people whose ancestors were Nigerian who lived in Chicago? Well, the ones in Chicago were living on French fries and soft drinks. Okay, I wanna make a cut here and just to say, he's talking about African Americans and Africans, whatever, you know, because we got some DNA connection and all that kind of thing, right? They, can do, they do that with other people. In Asia now, in Japan, for example, where all this Western fast food now is uh, becoming real common and they're eating a lot of it, now they're having diseases they never had before. Heart disease, cancer, kidney, di uh, kidney failure, right? Not, so it's not just us, it's people who are either eating the Western diet in their countries or they come to America and start eating the Western diet. And you end up 
with those diseases, those diseases, those illnesses, those imbalances. You got to eat what nourishes the body and builds the body. Let's hurry up. And the ones in the bush were putting minerals into their food every day and putting these minerals into their gardens. And their source of minerals was the wood ashes from their heating and cooking fires. And wood ashes are the minerals that are left when you burn away the carbon in their wood. And what we found out was that the people all over the world, whether it was Africa or Asia or Europe or North America or South America, since before recorded history, these people were using wood ashes as a source of minerals. It's very interesting. I've seen the study that you're talking about, and I noticed that all of the countries throughout the world in that study on the high blood pressure and their descendants, that the U.S. had the highest percentage of people with high blood pressure among all of the countries, even the third world countries. Why do you think that is? Well, again, Dirk, I think uh, people in the third world countries are still supplementing with minerals. They're still putting the wood ashes, which are the minerals that are left when you burn away the carbon in the wood, into their food. It's called culinary ashes. They cut their salt with it because salt is valuable. They'll cut their salt with wood ashes, 10 parts wood ashes to one part salt, or 100 parts wood ashes to one part salt. And they mix that all up, and they put that on their food instead of just straight salt. And they're getting a lot of major minerals and trace minerals from those wood ashes as the tree kind of pulled it up out of the soil. And the same thing is true with cancer. Why do the African-American men, going back to the original question, have a 100% higher rate of prostate cancer than white men? And that is because they eat fried foods and they don't have a supplement culture. And it's kind of an education process to bring... All right, did you hear that? We don't have a supplement culture. We don't think that we need to take supplements. Oh, my great, great, well, you just heard it. Your great, 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 they were supplementing. And then some of you who may have visited down south some years ago or whatever, when they, everybody was still burning uh, wood to, you know, fire to stay warm or in, to cook with. And if you watched in the morning, they threw those ashes out into the garden because they realized the food grew better it tasted better, it helped the soil, etc. So we did supplement. People have been supplementing this way for not just generations, but millennia. And so when, they, when electricity became available to people, people stopped using the wood burning stoves and things like that. And so because of the way that the food is grown now, I was alluding to that showed you some things earlier in this show about that, the way they're growing the food, they're growing it so it's larger, I mean, I'm seeing pears. I had never seen pears the size of the pears I'm seeing when, when I was younger. Cantaloupe, they're huge. They're filled with a lot of water, a lot of liquid, and they, they have much less nutrition in them. They have less calcium, less uh, potassium, all the things that our body needs. They're not growing the foods in the way such that they become more nutritious because they're depleting the soils and not putting the things back in the soils we need. And then on top of that, we're, we're exposed to a lot of toxins in processed foods. And on top of that, we're, we're frying a lot of foods and it's just very damaging to the body to eat that kind of food and barbecuing. Our folks eat barbecue and fried foods. And so it's not just us, it's the people in the South who are of European descent, they, when they eat the same way, they end up with all the same ailments, right? Okay, let's finish this up. <laughs> the concept of supplementation into the culture. Now back uh, when the black man was a slave in the United States, they were putting these wood ashes from their heating and cooking fires into their garden. They were mixing it with their food. They were cutting their salt with it. Once we got electricity and natural gas and propane for cooking and heating, there's no more wood ashes left over. And so they don't have that supplement source of these trace minerals and major minerals. As a result, they gave up that protection without putting any other supplement back into their life. And so we have to re-educate everyone in America, especially African Americans, to supplement properly, get all the known essential nutrients, the 60 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 essential amino acids, 3 essential fatty acids, err on the side of excess with these antioxidants, and we can eliminate a lot of diseases in the African American community in 90 days, including high blood pressure. That's one that's easily eliminated. It's a straight mineral deficiency disease. It's okay, we're running out of time, but I wanted you to hear him say, eliminate, not learn how to live with, okay? We can eliminate these disease, diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, 
cancer. We can eliminate these things by understanding what to do to prevent them. Not learn how to take medications or procedures, talking about managing. No, we want to get the body back on track to be able to keep itself balanced. Remember, the body repairs itself. It's on automatic pilot. It knows how to repair and all of that, but it has to have the right raw materials. It's like a, a welder is going to go and get that torch and, and fix a crack in a piece of metal or something like that. Well, he's got to have the right soldering or, or welding material to make that repair, right? You're going to run your car. You got to use the right kinds of fuels at the right times, taking in for maintenance, all of that. Let's learn to take care of our bodies so that we can eliminate, not learn how to live with these things, but eliminate them, okay? And I'm going to talk with you next show about supplements, the, the good ones, the ones that are harmful, and how to judge a good supplement. Because now I hope you're understanding that we live in a brave new world, and without supplementation, it's like Dr. Wallach likes to say, if you're out, for example, exercising, can you imagine someone out running today? It's 100 some degrees. If you're out there running and sweating out your minerals, right, because that's how the sweating process in the body works, you got to put that back in, right? Everybody, whether you're an elder, whether you're a young person, whatever, what you use those nutrients up in a day, living, dealing with stress, there go your B vitamins, dealing with your potassium and your sodium, go, that's to keep your heart right, to keep the fluids moving through your body, on and on. You use those up, that's why you have to eat again. You have to eat again to replenish, but you need to replenish, not with greasy food or with uh, things that you're allergic to. And some people insist on trying to eat things they're allergic to. Oh, it tastes good. If you're allergic to it, leave it alone. It's not helping the body, okay? So, we're out of time now. Oh, I always have so much to say. I enjoy so much having you here with me. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll listen to this over and over. I hope you'll make sure to catch the next show because I'm going to talk about supplements and how to choose a good supplement because you understand now you got to supplement to feel well, to do good, stay healthy, and become that best you, okay? That's what we want from you is your best you for yourself and to share with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, our sponsors, I'm so thankful for All-in-One Press Kit. Woohoo! I love my press kit. It's a gateway to all my social media and everything. I can put videos up of myself, explaining things, reaching out to you, on and on. Allinonepresskit.com. Check it out. All right, this is Sister Modupe, Sister Modupe's Raw Vegan Soul Food Show, signing off. See you again soon. Peace. That was fire. That's sweet. Okay, okay, I can change clothes and I'll be back.